Dear students, welcome to all of you. Today we are going to discuss the topic mechanism of opening and closing of stomata. Water movement between the guard cell and surrounding tissue is drawn by changes in guard cell osmotic potential. The resulting changes in turgor are translated via a specialized cell wall structure into changes in the size of the stomatal pore. The fundamental role of osmotic potential was demonstrated in the mid 19th century by von Moll in 1856, who showed that open stomata could be made to close by placing them in solutions of increasing osmotic strength. A stomata is a microscopic pore on the surface of land plants. It is surrounded by a pair of specialized epidermal cells called guard cells, which act as a turgor driven valve that open and close the pores in response to given environmental conditions. The guard cells are connected with the adjacent epidermal cells through plasmodesmata. Typical stomates of dicots consist of two kidney shaped guard cells. They are joined at their ends. The concavo convex curvature of two guard cells is variable and causes stomatal pore to open and close. In cereals, members of cyperaceae and some palms, the guard cells are dumbbell shaped in outline. Their expanded ends are thin walled, while middle portions are highly thick walled. Guard cells contain a few chloroplasts, whereas their neighboring epidermal cells seldom do. The presence of countless numbers of stomata is critical for plant function. Typically, the plant epidermis is tightly sealed by wax coated interlocking epidermal pavement cells, which protect the plant body from the dry atmosphere and ultraviolet rays. At the same time, plants must be able to exchange carbon dioxide and oxygen for photosynthesis and respiration. Stomata act as a gateway for efficient gas exchange and water movement from the roots through the vasculature to the atmosphere. Transpiration via stomata supplies water and minerals to the entire plant system. The unique structure of the stomata makes the plant more efficient and better able to cope during different environmental conditions. Less advanced plants such as liverworts do not have stomata. These plants have continuously open pores and therefore can only survive in extremely wet environments. The use of stomata, however, allows plants to survive in many different types of climates. Stomata are present in the sporophytic generation of all land plant groups except liverworts. Dicot ledens usually have more stomata on lower epidermis than the upper epidermis. Monocotyledons, on the other hand, usually have the same number of stomata on the two epidermises. In plants with floating leaves, stomata may be found only on the upper epidermis. 
submerged leaves may lack stomata entirely. In oleander or pine, the stomates occur in a substomatal crypt. Such sunken stomates are apparently an adaptation to reduce transpiration. Stomata appeared with the first vascular plants in the lower Devonian. The properties of stomatal cell walls play a role in the mechanics and physiology of stomatal movements. Stomates function the way they do because of special features in the submicroscopic anatomy of their cell walls. The cellulose microfibrils or mycelles that make up the plant cell walls are arranged around the circumference of the elongated guard cells as though they were radiating from a region at the center of the stomata. The result of this arrangement of microfibrils called radial mycelation is that when a guard cell expands by taking up water, it cannot increase much in diameter because the microfibrils do not stretch much along their length. Therefore, because two guard cells are attached to each other at both ends, they bend outward when they swell which opens the stomata. During opening moments, the plasma lemma is convoluted and probably related to iron influx. Microtubules have been shown to be involved in wall building and probably in stomatal functioning. Guard cell mitochondrial membranes undergo configurational changes during stomatal movements and those of open stomata have a larger vacuolar volume with one or few large vacuoles, whereas in closed stomata there are numerous small vacuoles. In some species, ribosomes are free in the cytoplasm of guard cells of open stomata, whereas in those of closed stomata they are associated in polysomes. Also in guard cells of open stomata, nuclei can possess a reticular condensed chromatin and in those of closed stomata, a homogeneous chromatin. These ultrastructural features are associated with the higher synthetic protein and RNA activities of the guard cells when stomata are closed. Now, mechanism of stomatal opening. Stomata function as turgor operated valves because their opening and closing movement is governed by turgor changes of the guard cells. Due to endosmosis, an increase in turgor of guard cells takes place, which finally results in stretching and bulging out of their outer thin walls. This results in the pulling apart of the opposite inner thicker walls, creating an opening or pore in guard cells of stomata. When the turgor pressure of guard cells decreases, inner walls sag, leading to closure of space between them. This is due to the loss of water or exosmosis, exosmosis from guard cells, resulting in thicker walls to move closer and finally shut the opening. Several theories have been put forth to explain the opening and closing of stomata. Now, turgor pressure theory. At the end of the 19th century, plant physiologists believed that as guard cells contain chloroplasts, they are capable of photosynthesis. Consequently, water present in guard cells is used up in the said process. At the same time, glucose is synthesized. Thus, both the steps cause an increase in diffusion pressure deficit or DPD of cells and as a result water from neighboring cells enters into guard cells creating an increased turgor pressure which leads to opening of stomata. At the outset, this presumption is quite attractive but experimental facts are different. 
amount of water consumed during photosynthesis is so low that it cannot have any significant effect on DPD of guard cells. While glucose synthesized during photosynthesis is a fact, but qualitative analysis shows that glucose does not contribute anything significant towards the DPD increase in guard cells. Thus, the theory fails to explain the true mechanism. Now, starch hydrolysis theory. Sayer in 1926 and Searley 1932 proposed their theories which are even though different from one another but show some similarities. The observations such as presence of starch in guard cells at night and its disappearance during daytime, opening of stomata under high pH condition and closing at low pH and decrease of CO2 level during daytime and increase at night are very well correlated to each other. During the daytime, green plants start synthesizing glucose by fixing carbon dioxide. Thus, the concentration of carbon dioxide decreases within the leaves as well as outside the leaves. This decrease in carbon dioxide concentration raises or increases the pH of the cell sap of guard cells. Due to this change in pH, certain enzymes found in guard cells get activated and start hydrolyzing the starch, which is osmotically inactive and results in the release of glucose, which is osmotically active. This enzymatic conversion causes an increase in the diffusion pressure deficit of guard cells. Automatically, a DPD gradient is created between the guard cells and neighboring cells, which make, makes the water to diffuse into guard cells. As a result, turgor pressure increases and guard cells bulge and open. The entire process is reversed during night by converting osmotically active glucose to osmotically inactive starch. This is due to the increased concentration of carbon dioxide because of continued respiration. This theory has got a good support from discovery of starch phosphorylase enzyme in guard cells by Young and Tan in 1948. Though this theory has some support from the experimental evidences, it is not known whether the same enzyme is involved in the dark conversion of glucose 1-phosphate to starch in closing of stomata or not. Thus, the theory has remained incomplete. The Stewart's theory. Stewart in 1964 based on previous observations, modified the theory of starch hydrolysis. He concurred with the earlier view up to the formation of glucose 1-phosphate, but he opined that glucose 1-phosphate is not osmotically active and to produce osmotically active molecules, glucose 1-phosphate has to be converted to glucose via phosphoglucomutase and phosphotase action. It is increase of glucose concentration that causes the DPD gradient which results in the increase in turgor pressure of the guard cells and opening of stomata. Further, he viewed that closing of the stomata is an active process because glucose is converted to starch through hexokinase which requires adenosine triphosphate or ATP. The conversion of glucose to starch leads to the fall of DPD level causing the guard cells to become flaccid and therefore the stomata close. This theory became popular and was widely accepted. But soon people realized that Stewart's hypothesis was contradicted by certain observations like a closure of stomata in the midday, b some guard cells are lacking in starch 
C. Effect of glycolate on opening of stomata. Thus, alternative explanation is where sought. Now, malate or potassium ion pump theory. The main features of the theory were put forward by Levitt. Levitt in 1974 combined the points in Scarth's and Stewart's hypothesis and gave a modified version of the mechanism of stomatal movement, which was called the proton potassium pump theory. There are two mechanisms for the active transport of potassium ion, which are supposed to take place in quick succession. These are number one light induced transport of protons H positive ions from the cytoplasm into the chloroplasts during photosynthesis creates a negative potential which eventually stops continued movement of protons. As a result of this potassium ions from the surrounding cells move into cytoplasm of the guard cells. This increases the positive potential and the movement of proton into the chloroplasts continues. Consequently, the pH of cytoplasm of guard cells is raised to 8 to 9, while that of chloroplast is reduced to 5. At a higher pH, carbon dioxide changes to carbonic acid HCO3 in the cytoplasm. Number second, due to photosynthetic activity in the chloroplast, starch is produced and it is converted into phosphoenol pyruvic acid or PEP during glycolysis in the chloroplast. PEP or phosphoenol pyruvic acid diffuses into cytoplasm of the guard cells, where in presence of enzyme phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase. It reacts with carbonic acid HCO3 to form organic acids. Phosphoenol pyruvate can also be formed by pyruvic acid of respiratory pathway. With the help of PEP carboxylase, it combines with available carbon dioxide to produce oxalic acid, which gets changed into malic acid. Malic acid dissociates into H positive ions and malate. H positive ions pass out of the guard cells. This in turn favors the influx of potassium ions accompanied by chloride ions into the cytoplasm of guard cells, increasing their osmotic pressure. Guard cells maintain their electron neutrality by balancing potassium ions with malate and chloride ions. In the combined state, they pass into the small vacuoles and increase the osmotic concentration of the guard cells. As a result, guard cells absorb water from the nearby epidermal cells through an osmosis, swell up and create a pore in between them. The influx of potassium ions into cytoplasm and efflux of protons is energized by H positive, K positive, ATPase pump. For every molecule of ATP hydrolyzed to ADP near the plasma membrane, one potassium ion will enter into the cytoplasm in exchange for one proton. Mechanism of stomatal closure. During darkness, protons or H positive ions start diffusing out of chloroplast into the cytoplasm. This continues till COO negative ions are available to combine with protons to form COOH or carboxylic acid molecules. These organic acid molecules will cause a reverse influx of potassium ions. They move out of the guard cells into the subsidiary cells. This will decrease the osmotic pressure of guard cell cytoplasm. As a result, exosmosis takes place and guard cell shrink, bringing about closure of stomata. Blue light 
wavelengths of daylight detected by zeaxanthin, a carotenoid, activate proton pumps in the guard cell membranes, which proceed to extrude protons from the cytoplasm of the cell. This creates a proton motive force, an electrochemical gradient across the membrane, which opens voltage operated channels in the membrane, allowing positive potassium ions to flow passively into the cell from the neighboring surrounding tissue. Chloride ions also enter the cell with their movement coupled to the re-entry of some of the extruded protons to act as counter ions to the potassium. Water passively follows these ions into the guard cells and as their turgidity increases, so the stomatal pore opens in the morning. As the day progresses, the osmotic role of potassium is supplemented by that of sucrose, which can be generated by several means, including starch hydrolysis and photosynthesis. At the end of the day, by which time the potassium accumulation has dissipated, presumably it is the fall in the concentration of sucrose that initiates the loss of water and reduced turgor pressure, which causes closure of the stomatal pore. Abscisic acid is the messenger that causes stomates to close under a slowly developing water stress. There are two feedback loops that control stomatal opening and closing. When carbon dioxide decreases in the intracellular spaces and thus in the guard cells, potassium ions move into guard cells and stomates open allowing CO2 to diffuse in and thus completing the first loop. This meets the first need of photosynthesis. In non-succulents, it leads to transpiration. If water stress develops, abscisic acid appears in the water that moves to the guard cells, so the stomates close, completing the second loop. The two loops interact the degree of stomatal response to abscisic acid depends upon carbon dioxide concentration in the guard cells and response to carbon dioxide depends upon abscisic acid. One feedback loop provides carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, the other protects against excess water loss. Stomates, as Rashke in 1976 has said, have been delegated the task of providing food while preventing thirst. The factors which influence stomatal movement. Number one, water. Guard cells can lose water into three different directions, outwards, into the neighboring, neighboring subsidiary cell and into the respiratory cavity. That is a part of the intercellular system lying beneath the guard cells. An equilibrium between the water vapor of the atmosphere and the respiratory cavity results when the stomata are opened. Plants form an intermediate distributor. Since a large difference in water potential between the moist soil and normally dry atmosphere is very common, plants profit from the concentration gradient that is a gain of energy for them while the closing movements of the stomata exert a decisive regulating influence. They close when too much water is lost or when not enough supply exists. The osmotic pressure of the stomata is far larger in the guard cells than in the subsidiary cells. This ratio shifts in favor of the subsidiary cells when the stomata are closed. Next, light and carbon dioxide. The stomata of most plant species are closed in darkness. The light intensity required for stomatal opening is quite low, that is 250 foot candles in tobacco. Even moonlight is sufficient in some cases. Light, however, stimulates opening. The action spectrum is similar to that of photosynthesis. Blue light especially effective in causing phosphorylation and activation of the plasma membrane, H positive ATPase that creates this potential. The stomata of CAM 
CAM plants like chrysolaceans are open during the night. They depend on the accumulation of carbon dioxide during the night. These plants store the carbon dioxide as malate or aspartate and feed it into the Calvin cycle during daytime. Open stomata would cause intolerable transpiration losses in the areas that camp plants live in. A low concentration of carbon dioxide causes the stomata to open. A high concentration leads to their closing. Photosynthesis starts with the first light of the day because NF carbon dioxide has been accumulated. Photosynthesis takes place in guard cells too since they contain chloroplasts in contrast to the subsidiary cells. This activity again is related to the rise of osmotic value and thus also to the opening of stomata. Thus opening and closing of stomata is regulated by two independent controlling cycles that of water and that of carbon dioxide. Regulation via water potential is an effective mechanism. On one hand the amount of water in the direct vicinity of the guard cells is calculated and on the other hand water potential of far away parts of the tissue is computed via the effect of abscessic acid. The water and carbon dioxide cycle may compete in case of closed stomata since carbon dioxide is usually a limiting factor in photosynthetically active tissues. The stomata remain nevertheless closed at simultaneous lack of water. The rate of photosynthesis decreases to a low level though it does not stop at all due to carbon dioxide that is repeatedly produced anew in considerable amounts by the respiratory processes within the plant. This is all about mechanism of opening and closing of stomata. In this topic we have discussed about structure and occurrence of stomata, the mechanism of opening and closing of stomata and the effect of various factors on opening and closing of stomata. Thank you very much. God bless you.